Hi, I hope you all have a copy of the pattern. If you don't, Kelly's going to post it in the chat and you can download it and print it out because I'm going to follow along by the pattern today. And uh, this is not only learning how to do a uh, hacky sack, but you have to learn how to know how to read patterns. A lot of people just crochet and it's all, somehow they do it with osmosis, I don't know. But I need a pattern for anything I make, anything. So this pattern is starting out telling you the size of your finished product. And that's two and a half inches approximately in diameter. So one of the things you need to have on hand is a ruler of some sort. See, it's two and a half inches diameter. That's approximate, two and a quarter, two and a half. You can also use something uh, like this, which is really cool, a gift from a friend. Um, anything will work as long as you can measure your little sacks when you're done. Now, the yarn I'm using is worsted weight acrylic number four. This one is so old, it was 99 cents. I got it in mm -hmm. stuff that was donated, <laughs> but uh, it works fine. And, and I probably had 20. It's like uh, the orange that Chelsea uses, only mine is red. I have lots of them. So that's what I'm using today. And the acrylic yarn will give you this size if you use a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. That's much smaller than what we use when we're crocheting scarves. If you'll see this, this is totally different than doing scarves. So if you've never worked with a smaller hook, you'll have to practice because it is different. And uh, you do need to use a 3.5. If you use a four, the only thing that will happen is you'll have looser stitches. Now, if you crochet very tightly, it's okay to use a 4.0. Mm -hmm. The one thing you don't want is popcorn or whatever you put inside popping out holes. Now, there's no holes in this. You can go around and you can't find holes. Even when I stretch it, you can't see the popcorn. That's good. But if you have too loose a stitch using a, two, a hook that's too big or yarn that's smaller, if you use DK yarn, you're going to end up with a much smaller um, hacky sack. So try to stick to what they say in the pattern unless you know how to adjust your yarn and hook size. Materials, popcorn kernels, unpopped, dried peas, lentils, or any small beans, but please do not use rice. That's very important because it sneaks out the holes and you have rice everywhere. So no rice. A funnel. I did not have a funnel when I started this, so I used, at the suggestion of something online, a plastic bottle, and this is a one pint, it's a small one, and you cut it off and it turns into a funnel. And it fits perfectly into the, the hole so that no kernels are falling all over the floor. I probably won't fill this in class today because I have a tendency to spill and they're very dangerous on the floor. So be careful if you get popcorn kernels on the floor, make sure you get them all or they will trip you later. Okay, so that's a funnel, or if you have a funnel that's a real funnel, that's fine too. Stitch markers. These are my stitch markers that I never use for marking stitches. The only thing I use them for is if I make something and I go away, I wanna keep my thing from unraveling, I put it in there because it hooks in there but I never use them for stitch markers. Well, what do you use? Yarn, a piece of yarn. And it doesn't have to be hooked and unhooked. You just pull it out and put it back in on your next stitch. So I always use yarn. You can use whatever you want, but that's just telling you what I do. Then a row counter. My favorite row counter is this one. It fits on my finger. So I don't have to go pick it up every time I wanna count my row and click it and put it down. I'm all for saving effort, time. So here's this one and they come on Amazon. You can find them, just search for your favorite kind of stitch marker or use whatever you want. But these are really more row counters because they're counting rows, not stitches. It zeroes out. Make sure you don't push the wrong button or you'll lose your count. When I do a row, I push it. 
Now, if I do another row, it's two. Another row, it's three. That means that's the row I'm going to do now. When I finish row three, I push it. Now I'm on row four. It helps me keep track. You have to, if you have real small fingers, so you've got to cut this and adjust it because it kept falling off. They didn't have a one that fit me right. Okay, and here's another way of keeping track. How many rows have I done? I just finished row six. I just finished row seven, row eight. Also, it's nice to have a paper and pencil aside when you're making a <coughs> class like this. You can take notes, you can make notes, or you can write on your pattern, which I, I really think you should make notes on the pattern. If you have it with you today and something isn't clear or you might wanna make a note of any kind, your pattern there is really helpful. Now we're gonna to go to abbreviations. This is really important. Crochet is like another language. It has its own firms and its own shorthand. MR, you will see quite often, magic ring, but you'll also see it as MC, magic circle. There's also an alternate method, chain two, and I'll show you both of those, the magic ring and the alternate method so that you will have a choice. If you don't have, took me a long time to learn the magic ring. I watched many, many videos. There's a list of videos at the end of, of the uh, pattern that might help you. But eventually it just clicked and now I can do a magic ring and no problem at all. So just keep at it if you don't get it the first time or use the alternate chain two method, that's fine too. Now SC is single crochet. If you don't know how to do a single crochet, you probably are in a class that's a little too advanced for you because that's beginning crochet. This is more of an intermediate crochet class. It's a crochet technique that's, that's gonna lead you to amigurumi, which is more intermediate. Beginners is just single crochet. You've gotta know that one. SS is slip stitch. That's one you need to know. And you don't have to memorize these right now. You'll learn them as you go along. INC is increase and DEC is decrease. Increase makes things bigger. Decrease makes things smaller. When you increase a stitch, you're going to put two stitches where normally you would put one. That increases it by one. A decrease, you're going to take two stitches and crochet them together. Now you have one stitch where there used to be two. Two stitches into one. That decreases your number of stitches. I will also be showing you another one you will see, invisible decrease and invisible increase. I like them, I use them all the time, but only with amigurumi because it's not a technique you're gonna use when you're making a scarf or a sweater or anything like double crochet or triple crochet. These are single crochet methods used for making amigurumi. And this ball, this toy that we're making is definitely amigurumi. And you might have to practice saying that a lot of times because some people never can pronounce it, but that takes practice too. R is for round or row. This is all done in the round. Okay, you don't join your rows. You just keep going round and round until you get to where you wanna make stripes. Then you can join your stripes and you see there's no, very little that you can see where it was done, okay? So this method is, is in the round and that's what the R means, round or row. Chain, CH, you should know that one. Stitches, and then X times number of times to repeat what is in brackets. Brackets can be parentheses, so parentheses, or they can be those curly little brackets. And I'll show you when we get to the pattern where those are. Now, I'm gonna go up to the pattern side and show you, somebody asked earlier, the right side and the wrong side. This is the right side, it's what it looks like. This is the wrong side. Or we like to say outside of the amigurumi ball, inside. Another way you can tell is there's a tail 
the tail is on the inside. I just saw something on the internet this morning that was kind of cute. It said, think of it as a bowl and there's a noodle inside your bowl. <laughs> so when you're crocheting, you know you're doing it right if you're crocheting a bowl and there's a noodle inside. This is your outside and you're going to be crocheting around it from the outside. Okay. You need to learn the diameter or the um, what a stitch looks like from the top. You see the V there? This is the V right there. Okay. And in some of the most stitches, you're going to go under both stitches. That's a normal single crochet. If you're um, going to learn the invisible decrease, you're only going to go through the front. And that's the front stitch. So you can loosen it up and you can see it. That's the front loop, that's the back loop. You need to learn the anatomy of a stitch in order to be able to follow the directions. Um, right now I'm going to show you how to do a magic ring, hopefully. And this is just my method. I have some different methods probably than what you would normally do. And you're going to see me crocheting yarn under all the way through this thing. So you'll also learn yarn under and yarn over. You won't, probably don't even pay any attention to how you use your yarn to whether you flip it over or you do it under, but you will see it in this presentation. Okay, so my method is to hold the yarn like that okay, and make an X and hold that with my little finger. It's very complicated, <laughs> but this is, this is easy for me. Now I see my X, how am I going to turn over here and I'm going to go under this one and over that one, pull it through, twist. And this is my locking stitch here, okay? I'll show you that a couple more times later on, but this is the beginning of your magic ring. This is not your first stitch. This is just what locks it together. So you're going to go into the loop, grab your yarn and make a single crochet. Into the loop. Now see, I'm going yarn under. You didn't even know that. That's two, three, four. Later you'll be able to stop the video and rewind and play it over and over if you want to. Five. Six. Six is that number that almost all of these patterns start with. It's, it's unusual when they start different, but they all start with six. Six SC in MR. Six single crochet in magic ring equals six stitches. What is in parentheses out here in every row tells you how many stitches you should be at in that row. So you can always check and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, I have six. Okay, I'm all right. If not, you'll have to adjust. Your um, 12 stitches are next. So what you need to do here is pull the magic ring tail so that it closes, but not too tight. Because if you do it too tight, you won't be able to get your crochet hook into the stitch. It will be so tight that it'll prevent you from doing that. Now is the time I need my um, stitch row counter, whatever, my row thing. Okay, there it is. Not a stitch marker, it's, it's a row marker to me. So there it is, that hangs out there. And when you're done with it, at the end of the row, you just pull it. Right now it's sitting around the throat of the stitch, right around its neck, okay? Now to find your first stitch, you want your first complete stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. So you go under here, it's even a little tight for me, but. Penny, your hands have drifted a little bit to the left. Can you shift to the right just a little bit? You're moving into the corner. I think it's the um, camera. There you okay, go. perfect, thank you. Right. Sure. So one stitch and into the same stitch, that's two stitches. 
So where it says increase in each stitch around, in every one stitch, you're going to put two stitches. You'll end up with 12. One, two. Okay. Now you're going to count in your head and you have your own way of doing it. When I'm doing increases like this, I just go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down to 12. One, somebody comes in and interrupts me. I know that I haven't done two yet. One, now you can see I'm, I'm actually yarn under. Yarn under is grabbing this and pulling it through. If I were to do yarn over, and I'll just show you the difference, it goes this way. Yarn under goes this way. You can practice that until you're comfortable with it. You may be doing yarn under over all the time and not even know it because a lot of people learn one way and that's the way they do it all the time and they don't even know they're doing yarn under. The reason I like to do yarn under is because it makes a much tighter, smoother, better looking stitch. So every time I crochet, I crochet with yarn under for amigurumi, but not for scarves. Okay, so there's your first row. Now you're going to pull this out and put it around the neck of the stitch. Ah. Here, this is the other thing you do at this point now. We've done one row. So row one is done, click. Row two is done, click. So you're on row three. In your pattern, we're working on the bottom of the amigurumi. It will, won't matter, it won't be top or bottom when you're done because they're identical. The top and the bottom are the same and the middle. So the anatomy of a happy sack is top, middle, bottom, top, bottom, middle, either way. But right now we're doing the bottom and we're on row three. This is where you're going to single crochet and increase six times. Now that's confusing to people who don't understand that this parentheses or brackets, whatever they are, whatever's inside of there, you do six times. Does that sound a little like algebra? It does, huh? In fact, you can multiply this out. Single crochet one, that's one stitch. Increase, increases two stitches. So total in that bracket is three stitches. Six times three is 18 stitches. You can count your stitches at the end of that row to make sure you have as many as you need. It's really important for me. Sometimes I count every row if I'm not sure, if I'm using a new yarn or something, I wanna make sure that everything is the right. Row four, single crochet two increase times six. Single crochet one, two, one, two, and increase. Four stitches. Six times four is 24. Then you go to 30. Now what's interesting, I was doing a, a Easy Soldier doll the other day and I realized, and I should have known exactly, but row one through five here is exactly the same as this head in row one through five. When you, it's right up until when you get to the middle part. See, this one is 30 stitches. This one is 30 stitches. For our hacky sack, we go one more row because we want it to be 36 stitches. But you can see how you're already making amigurumi. This doll is as easy to make as a hacky sack. Once you learn how to read the instructions, follow the pattern, and practice your stitches. Now, in the middle part, it's interesting here. I made these in different colors to show you. But in the middle part of the, um, even this one too, the bottom, the middle is all continuous crochet around, crochet around, crochet around. It is not increasing. It is not decreasing. And when you get to that point where you're up to row six and you finish it, you should be able to measure it and it should be two and a quarter to two and a half inches. It's not exact, it doesn't have to be, but 
it makes standardization so that you're, you're, you know you're not gonna have a huge ball or like a friend of mine who made one, read this as row seven through 12. She didn't see the through 12. Row R, R seven through 12, single crochet around six rows. I always put that in my pattern so that people know to do six rows. Now it's not five rows because sometimes I look at seven through 12 and think, well, that's five rows because I take seven from 12, but it's not. You count seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, six rows, 36 stitches. And it says tighten magic ring. It's important to be sure to remember to tighten the magic ring after your sixth row. So how do you tighten the magic ring? You wrap this around your finger and you yank as hard as you can, thinking you're gonna break the yarn. But if you break the yarn, start over with better yarn because it's not going to break if it's good yarn. What it does is make that hole invisible, no more hole. If you start, and here's another one, I'll show you that this is, this is the hole that was left by the magic ring. Now I'm gonna pull it as tight as I can. And sometimes you'll feel like a, a little click or something. There you go. It closes the magic ring. Important to remember to do that, otherwise you're gonna lose popcorn. Now the other way, we're gonna make a um, not magic ring. This one, I'll just frog it. We're going to take a chain two. So first you make your slip knot. And that is not your first stitch. That used to confuse me a lot because I never seem to have the right count. That is not a stitch. This is chain one, chain two. That's two chains and the thing you started with, that, that uh, loop. So when they say single crochet in the second chain from the hook, it's almost impossible to crochet in the first one anyway because it's right on your hook. So you go down to the second one and you single crochet. Put all 12 stitches in that. Two, three, four. This is boring, huh? Five, six. Always going into that same hole. Seven, oops, not 12, six. I thought I got ahead of myself. All right, now I can't tighten this because it's a, not possible. It's not a magic ring. So when you get through and it where it says to tighten magic ring, you might want to go in and sew it closed. Somehow make stitches across it because you don't want to lose popcorn all over the place. So if you use the single crochet um, two and put all your stitches in the second stitch, you might end up with a hole. If you do, you have to close that hole. You have to tighten it or you can't tighten it. So you have to sew over it to make sure that it's gonna be not uh, coming loose. So your middle section uh, back to that has seven to 12, six rows, 36 stitches over and over again. And you mark each row like we did before with your yarn, or you can use a hook like this if you wanna hook it and unhook it each time. And if you don't, you end up with a very small ball. My friend made it and just saw round seven and didn't see seven through 12. So she went round seven, just did one row and then finished it off. And she had a very small hacky sack because you need some rows in the middle. If you don't like the size of your happy sack, you can increase or decrease these. But this is what I found were kind of the best is to have six rows in the middle. So you're at the bottom part, you're increasing. Then you have your middle part where you're not increasing or decreasing. And then you have the top, which is exactly the same as the bottom, but in reverse. These are your decrease rows. So where you had single crochet three and he came out with 30. Now 
then you have single crochet four came out with 36 so you're going to take it back down from 36 to 30 from 30 to 24 from 24 to 18. this is important for just your mind to know that this is exactly the opposite it helped me to, to look at the math again so i've got four single crochets decrease so four and a decrease is one stitch because you take two and you turn it into one. So that is five. So six times five is 30. Same thing right down here, three and two. Three stitches and one stitch, Sorry, decrease is one stitch. Six times four is 24. It's just helps me and it might not help everybody else, but it does help me. Now, when you're gonna fill your, you're gonna fill this, Okay. Can you pour your popcorn kernels or whatever you've got inside there? I'm afraid to do it here because I know I'll spill them all over the floor. Then 80% um, full. What does that mean, 80% full? This is a lot of math, isn't it? Percentages, algebra, <laughs> but it's really very simple once you learn how to read a pattern. 80% full to me means that you can squish it like that. You get a little dent. I cannot squish his head that way because he's stuffed with polyester, uh, but also because he's stuffed very tight. One of the things they tell you is to stuff really hard with amigurumi, stuff as much as you can and then stuff some more, unless you see holes appearing and then you don't, you know, you stuffed too much. So you want to stuff enough to make it hard so that you can't squish it in, but not so hard that it makes holes between the stitches. Okay. Now, um, the closing the hole part is here. I'm just going to, it's not easy to crochet over a bunch of popcorn in there. Um, and some of it will spill out in your lap sometimes, and that's not good. So what we're going to do here, this is closing the hole. Just for giggles, I always lose these things. Here it is. <laughs> okay. First thing to do is to put on the piece of yarn around the throat of the stitch to make sure you'll know where your row started. Penny, your hands have drifted again. Please move your hands. Thank you. Okay. It's not easy because you just there. Okay. Um, so you single crochet one and decrease. So I'm going to single crochet. And now I'm going to invisible decrease, which means I'm going to pull up a loop here and pull up a loop here. That's two stitches. And I'm going to turn them into one stitch. So I'm going to pull through two and pull through two. Now I have invisible decreased one stitch. If you don't want to use the invisible, you're going to single crochet one, and then you're going to go into a stitch under both loops. Like I showed you earlier, there's two loops there, two, and then pull through all three. It makes for a lumpier stitch and it sometimes leaves some holes. That's why for amigurumi, I prefer, and most people use the invisible decrease. So let's do one. Now here, we'll, I'll show you again, yarn over versus yarn under. Okay. okay. I'm gonna pull through Then I'm going to invisible decrease. On this one, when you're practicing, it doesn't make any difference if you do every other stitch increase, decrease, um, the, the invisible decrease or not. Because when you get done, it's pretty gonna look pretty much the same. But if you're doing something like a doll's head, you want it to be as smooth as possible and not see where you increased and decreased. 
And pretty much you can't see where the increases and decreases are. And that's a really good technique to know. In fact, there's one back there on his neck, I think, that I got the wrong thing. See the hole there? I don't care. You know, they we're not that picky or fussy, but it is a good technique to learn. So you would go around on each of these rows, single crochet one, decrease six times, and you're gonna take it down to 12 stitches from 18 to 12. So you're decreasing six times, which means six decreases, okay? Now finished hacky sacks, oh, then you close the hole at the end and there's a little video that I've linked to that is a perfect way to close it. But um, it's a matter of using your yarn needle and going in and out of each stitch that's left and then pulling it tight. There'll be six stitches left when you get done decreasing. And if it's hard to pull, uh, this is an, a handy dandy little thing. This silicone, whatever it is, like a flower, I ordered them on Amazon. I don't remember what they were called, but silicone disc of some sort. But it's to pull your needle through so many times. It just slips and slips and slips. If you're trying to do something really tight and you're getting that needle in there, this really helps to pull that needle through. So you should be writing this down now on your pattern if you don't have these or know what they are. It's like if you've learned something new, cool. Finished hacky sacks should weigh approximately 1.5 to 2.5 ounces. I have weighed all of these different hacky sacks and they're all about the same size and everything, but this one was over three ounces because the yarn is much thicker. This yarn was simply soft and simply soft evidently weighs less. It's got the same amount of popcorn in. And by the way, if you don't get enough popcorn in, there is a way to pull these apart and push in one popcorn turtle at a time. I did that with this one because I did not have enough popcorn in it. It was too flat. So there are little tricks and things you can do. Now, if you wish to attach a small card with your name and your email, you can do that because we want people to know who made them and maybe you'll get an email back saying thank you. But as a reminder, you're supposed to use dirty card stock, not plain paper. And you punch a hole in the card and attach it with a piece of yarn. And that would work. So now um, I'm going to go through showing you a couple more things that I didn't yet. On the back of your... Um, Yarn under and yarn over and invisible decrease and visible increase. Okay. I haven't shown you the invisible increase. And I like that one because it really makes it look nicer. I hate how long these take to hook and unhook. That's why I don't like to use them. I'll pull this out. I always use lose these everywhere. So get a whole bunch of them and cut them the right length and make them out of probably cotton yarn because it doesn't stretch and it doesn't uh, ravel, unravel. See how unravelly this gets? This is acrylic yarn. Cotton yarn doesn't do that. So I, I make a whole bunch of them and I usually have them sitting in a pile next to me because I swear they stick to my clothes. I fall on the floor, they get tangled with the yarn. And so I always want them on hand. So that's a... Yeah, this yarn has a tendency to split. It's probably why it was 99 cents, I don't know. Okay, this isn't probably where you would increase or decrease, but I just wanna show you the technique. So say I was gonna go single crochet one and increase. To increase, I would put one, two stitches in the same stitch. Single crochet. Now I'm gonna show you the invisible one. That way we did it was just the way everybody does it. Regular increase. An invisible increase 
you go in this front loop, like I showed you before, see that the front loop, you've got your V, two loops in your V. And by the way, don't go into this one, which you already did. Make sure you're in the stitch that's next. So anyway, I'm going to go into the front and increase one. Now I'm going to go under both front and back stitches the total V, increase two. It's much flatter. It doesn't leave as many holes. I'm gonna show you again, increase is to go in the front loop and then go under both loops. Now I've made two stitches in one stitch. I've increased, but it's flatter, it's neater. It's, um, I just don't think I would wanna do it any other way anymore. So, front loop and under both loops, increase. Now pretend I've come to a place in my pattern where I single crochet one and I'm going to yarn under. Well, let me just show you a few of those. Yarn under versus yarn over. Yarn over, yarn over. You see the difference? At first I couldn't see the difference. I thought it's the same thing, but it's really not. If you start looking and go in your stitch, here's your, your hook. I'm going to go over the yarn. I'm actually, I'm putting the yarn under the hook. So that's a yarn under. Yarn under the hook. Okay, versus yarn over, you see I'm flipping the yarn, yarn over the hook. Yarn over the hook. That's the normal way you would do it. But if you wanna make really neat amigurumi or hacky sacks or whatever, you'll learn the yarn under method and it'll feel really awkward when you first do it and it'll frustrate you. But if you keep at it, it becomes your natural way and then it feels funny to do it the other way. Okay, let's decrease. Show you how a regular decrease, you go in this stitch and this stitch and pull over three. You've now churned two stitches into one. Decrease, decrease another one. One and two and pull it through. Those are decreases. See how lumpy they are and how they leave a hole in between? I don't like those. Okay, so let's decrease. Pull up one. And in the next. And then you actually have one more stitch to go here, but it's much flatter. One. One, now we're taking two stitches and turning them into one stitch. Decreases. Increase invisible and, and, and um, the regular ones. These look really funny on the hacky sack here, but that's just to show you how to do that. Um, I have some videos that I recommend and they're by a lady called Planet June. It also really helps if you're left-handed because she has right and left-handed videos and she also has the written instructions and the videos. I can't learn as well from videos as I can from written instructions, but sometimes I need to go watch a video to see something, how it's done, but I really like having a pattern. And um, see if I said everything, I guess. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly for questions and answers, and hopefully I'll be able to answer any other questions or show you something you didn't quite get. I can repeat that. So, Kelly, are you there? Of course I'm here. Hi, everyone. So there's been a lot of information. I've posted a couple of files. The first one is, of course, the pattern, and the second one has all of the links that Penny uh, has been talking about. So it's really important that before you leave the group, you click on both of those and download. Um, if not, once we leave this group, it won't be there available, or you can send me an email at hwl 
handmade with love at operationgratitude.com. And I can go ahead and send those links over to you again. So at this point, what I'd like each of you to do, uh, if, not, if, if you have a question to come off of mute, ask questions, let Penny go ahead and, and walk you through each step that you're not quite sure on. So this is your moment, folks, ask away. Seriously, I must have done an excellent job because they all know exactly how to do it, or else they're so confused they don't know enough to ask a question. <laughs> I, I have a question. Um, could you, Penny, could you do again the, the decrease? Uh, do a it, couple where you decrease? Invisible or? No, probably regular <laughs> to start. <laughs> yeah. Those things I didn't learn in the beginning. It took me time. So, yeah. Okay. So, we're taking a stitch. Oh, move your hands. Yeah. I'm, 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 oh. I'm frogging. You she's, she's frogging out the yarn right now. So, give her a minute so she can get back to where she All can right. do that. So, go under. Penny, Penny, move your hands to the right, please. Okay. That a girl. Thank you. So, under both the V. You're going to go under both stitches, the front loop and the back loop. And you're going to pull up a loop here. Then you're going to go through the next stitch under both of them and pull up. A, now you've got three loops on your hook. And in order to decrease, you're going to pull through all three. It's really simple. You're taking two stitches and turning them into one. And I'll do it again. You go under both loops, pull up. And then the next stitch, same thing, three stitches on the hook and pull through all three. There's one extra um, step when you're doing the invisible, so that don't get confused there. This is just taking, instead of going one crochet in one stitch, that's what that would be, you're going to take one, two, and through all three. So you've taken two stitches and made them into one. Thank and, you. Okay. And does that make sense? It does. I think I was just missing where you moved down into that next hole and I couldn't figure out how that was decreasing, but I see it now. Thank you. And I'm trying to translate to my left-handed brain as you're doing it. Be sure and watch Planet June's video. I'm going to. I'm going to. Thank you. Hi, I have a question again. It's about the wrong side and right side. We talked about that earlier. When I start, when I start mine, the string is on the bottom and that's when it starts to curve up. But the string is supposed to be on the inside or should I pull a string through the hole to go I, on the inside? I think what you mean by curve up is like this. Yes. Just push it that and now it's it's, yes. So in other words, a string where I start is on the, uh, on the bottom, on the outside. Mm -hmm. So should I, again, so should I flip it or pull the string to go on the inside for the right and wrong way? Right. Uh, I don't have any problem with that. So I'm, I'm having a little trouble with the question because sometimes it seems like I'm doing it on the wrong side, uh -huh. but it's because I haven't pushed it this way. I'm not turning it inside out. Okay. So the string, so when I'm doing it, the string is on the outside. First one time I did it, the string was on the inside, but the string is on the outside. Should I just go ahead and pull it through to go? I guess I can pull it through to go on the inside if this is. As long as you know for sure that you're going in the right direction, because sometimes you might pick up your work and start going this way. Oh yeah. You're on the wrong side. You might've picked up your work and went the wrong direction. If you're always going this way, right to left, but you pick this up and now you're going right, to, but you, you're on the wrong side. So you have uh -huh. to realize where you are. I think you might've just picked it up and turned it accidentally. Uh huh. Okay, so the V's should actually, the V's, I, I, it, what I've been doing, the V should be actually facing up when you're working. If, do you know what I mean? uh these yes because yes. it starts to curve a little bit the v's should be facing up when you're working and that's the right side i assume yeah this is the right side this is the wrong side 
it's pretty obvious after you've crocheted a well, but some yarns don't show it as well as especially variegated. You don't, you aren't going to see it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what I've been doing to decrease is just skip a stitch. So, um, and I've been using cotton yarn. So is that going to create a problem later on? Have you finished any hacky sacks and tried tossing them around and seeing if the holes open up and you lose any popcorn? Yes, I have, and it seems to work just fine. Well, if it works, then you're okay. Uh, cotton yarn, what is it, four ply? Uh huh. Worsted? It seems fatter and thicker to me than acrylic worsted. So maybe it fills the hole. I have never crocheted skipping stitches. I don't like the idea. Um, personally, I'm going to try one here because it leaves a hole. But if you're working with thick cotton yarn, then maybe it's okay. If it works for you and you're not losing any popcorn, it's okay. okay. You might try it, try putting in um, a de Do you not know how to decrease or you just don't want to? Um, it works for me when I just skip a stitch. Yeah. So, but you might want to try going in and doing it where you're actually decreasing. See if that works for you. If not, then can continue to do what you do. A lot of people do things forever because it's the way they've been taught from the beginning. And if it works, I don't think you need to change it. Okay. You know? the, okay. the one thing I would say about skipping stitches is I would take the ball literally and kick it around a few times, give it some impact to see whether or not the co the popcorn is popping out those holes that you're creating. So um, uh, my concern is that if you are doing the skip stitch, I think you're gonna have a problem with popcorn falling out. Or what you can do is instead of using popcorn, use a little bit larger bean, like a kidney bean, a pinto bean, something like that. And then you don't have to worry if the holes are a little bit big. Uh, they, there's no way those are gonna pop out on a skip stitch. Uh, what I've been doing so far is when I'm done and I've closed the hole, then I squeeze it or toss it around like that just to even everything out. And it seems to be just fine. Yeah, you have to remember these are going to come under great impact when they're kicked. So that's why I say you need to really give it a few good smashes because when the, the ball is actually played and kicked, there's huge impact that comes into it. And so, you know, just to be safe, go ahead and do that. If it still works with the skip stitch, be you, have fun with it. Okay. Here's what? another, somebody else? Here's another technique that uh, I didn't think I would have time to show you, but I probably will. If you want to join colors and make perfect looking stripes without having a lot of jogs, they call it. There's several methods for doing a jogless crochet. You cannot tell where I changed colors on that blue row. It's jogless. Um, one of the ways to do it, the way you would normally change colors is you would take, this is your last stitch for the row. You haven't finished it. You pull up your color and then say your next color is white. You would pull it through those two stitches and that makes it your color and it doesn't show so bad. But the problem is with that is that when you get to your next couple of rows, you're gonna have a jog. And this might work for you, it might not. But what I do is I, I finish my row instead of leaving and working in my last stitch, I finish my row, pull up this yarn, go into the next stitch from the back and put the loop over there and pull it through which isn't always easy. So that it's now, go ahead, I don't care. It's on the back of your row. You see, it's, it's in the back. So when you're going to add your color, you're not going to see where it's going to be. I pull that down. It's in the back, it's totally hidden. So where you are joining, is going to be an invisible type join. 
Okay. Then I would chain one and go into the same stitch and just keep crocheting around. But you're not going to see that like you would normally see when there was a, um, I don't think I even had any with jogs. It's something you wanna look up and, and think about because a jogless crochet join, I had never heard of. And so when I first learned it, I just couldn't stop making stripes because they were no longer that big bump. Like, um, well, he doesn't have it, but if you, yeah, see his hand here, you can't see where I joined the pink. There's no big lump. The, the, usually there's a, a step down or a step up from the brown to the beige. And there isn't on this because I used the jogless join. Also, another trick is when you're doing something like this, just single crochet in the uh, back loop only or front loop only. And it gives you a different look. There's lots of different fun things. Once you start Amigurumi, you'll learn so many more things. And I'm always pushing myself. I'll go try something I've never done. I'll try lots of different stitches. I'll try making food, making snakes, you know, whatever, because I'm learning new techniques all the time when I do that. Question? I have a question. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm just, what I really wanted to see you do was to fill the, um, the, the hacky sack with the popcorn. Because when I look online, it looks like some of them like this one looks pretty flat to me. And I, I don't know if it's, if I'm not putting enough popcorn in, can you make it so that there isn't enough popcorn in there and it's not gonna work? <laughs> well, this one didn't have enough popcorn. And I told you, I actually put one kernel at a time in until it was stuffy enough for me. But um, you, did you really want me to pour popcorn in here and see? I mean, yes, I can, I can do that. Yes. Well, I, I, all right. So if I get killed by popcorn on the floor, it's all your fault. Okay. <laughs> because I usually spill popcorn all over, but not so bad if I have a cup yeah, rather than pouring from the bag. Penny, move your hands to the right again. I can't see the top of your little funnel. There well, you go. Thank you. I don't think you can see it anyway. So anyway, I'm going to go in here. Okay. Usually two is enough, but I look down inside and see that needs just a little bit more. You kind of have to look inside. Now see, there goes escapees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a little too full. If you want to see that to me, because I, I squeeze it. Okay, might be a little too full, but you gotta pay attention to your insert, uh, what a filling that you're using, and the kind of yarn, and squeeze it a little. It's got to be squeezable. See, squeeze. Once they're done, I can tell because I'm poking that. But anyway, and then you just close it off. Yep, oh, spilled. That one's not our fault. I know, I did that one. <laughs> so um, I, we're at the point where we single crochet one and decrease. Do you want to see that? I mean, this is hard. Yes. Because they keep popping up, okay? Be patient, slow down, you'll get it. Single crochet one. Bring your hands up, please. Up I can't, middle. I'm concentrating on- I There you go, much better. Now, I poured a little popcorn out because I was having trouble doing this without losing popcorn all over. So you single crochet one and then you decrease. I'll just decrease the regular way. Single crochet one. And I don't know where I'll end because of course I didn't put my row counter piece of yarn on there. Decrease. Doesn't matter. You're just closing the hole. Single crochet one. Did somebody say something? Decrease. There goes another piece of popcorn out. That's the only thing I don't. I usually sit with this locked in my lap 
so that popcorn can't go anywhere. And, uh, but you can see that there's a little space in, and 80% is what Kelly suggested, 80% full. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing here, but what, what other problem were you having there with it? Is it just not knowing when it was 80% full or? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I, I was putting enough in there and that these weren't too skinny. Oh, I don't think that that's a problem. Can, if they're done and you can push them like that, See, yeah, I, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. It seems that this one just seems like it's too skinny. I don't know if you can see it. No, because I only have my hand. Yeah, on. Eugenie, if you can oh. bring your hand down a little bit so I can see it, you're kind of, uh, you've got it up at the top. No, that looks fine. You know what I have to do is get, get myself back on the screen yeah. so I can see. No, that looks really good. Yeah. I don't think you need to add any more to that at all. Really? Yeah. Is it just... Okay. You're right. And remember, as you squeeze it more and more, the stitches are going to loosen up a little bit. So I, you know, you can pack it a little tighter if you're, you know, that worried about it. But from what I can tell where Penny goes is she's at the stitches just before I believe she goes down to 12. That's when she inserts and begins. Yep. Okay. Does that the make other, sense? The other thing is can, can these go in, um, into your bag that you're going to vacuum out? Will, Absolutely. Can these go in there? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you might lose a little bit of popcorn on one or two, but unless you have an industrial strength vacuum cleaner, <laughs> um, you're not going to yeah. suck it down so tight that it's going to, it's going to like blow it all out. You don't have to worry about that. Well, should I put those on the bottom and then put the uh, hats and scarves on top? Doesn't, Doesn't really matter. matter. Doesn't really okay. matter. Yeah, I don't. I don't sweat things that small when I'm vacuuming up. So just okay. <laughs> set it in there, vacuum it. I can't imagine that you're going to lose any popcorn at all from doing that. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? I have, I have a question, uh, Penny. Could you show us how to do the magic ring one more time, a little more slowly? Okay find my yarn thing. <laughs> I have so much yarn here. I don't know which one doesn't have a thing on it. There it is. Okay. They're all attached to different things in different stages of development. Okay. Magic ring, the way I do it, and that doesn't mean it's the only way or the best way. And I'm sure Kelly has a different way. And, and uh, there is another method. I'm not going to show you today, but where you, you, you tie it a circle, I still can't get it. So anyway, I go around over this way and then I make an X and I turn here and I hold it with my pinky finger. So my working yarn is back there and my tail for the inside of the magic ring is up here. I'm going to go underneath the first, pull this through. Okay, Penny, can you start again? Your hands went way off screen while you were doing that. I'm having a terrible time with this thing, but anyway, okay. So here's your hand. Make an X and go down and hold it with your pinky finger. That's what it looks like from the back. That's what it looks like from the front. Now I'm going to go underneath the first strand and pull the other one under and twist and then pull this through. Now you gotta be careful not to have this too tight or this won't go through, which is the problem I'm having right now. There, okay. Now that is your anchor chain. It's not your first stitch. So it's important to know that when you've got to put six in now, don't count this one. You're going to do six from here. Some people will do a chain one and then six. I've never had use for that because it seemed to make it odder for me. So I didn't do that, but that's just my method. It doesn't have to be your method. I'll show you again, because this is the hard part. X. 
marks the spot. And then your pinky finger is gonna grab it. Okay, now hold tight with your thumb on your pinky there so that the yarn, because this is the tail that goes inside your agarumi. Under, pull through, twist, pull through. And make sure your stitches go over both of these here. Both of those strands of yarn have to be secured. Two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going over those two strands the whole time. Now to close my ring, I'm going to pull on the tail part, but not too tight because if you do it too tight, it's hard to get your crochet hook into the stitches. So does that help? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Penny. You're welcome. All right, ladies. So um, any more questions? One thing I wanted to see if you had any questions about reading a pattern. For most people, they get to the pattern and it looks like Greek. So what I'd like you all to do is take a look at that. Penny, you just turned off your iPhone or uh, your iPhone just shut off. It may be dead. Okay, well then let's go ahead and take it off the screen and bring yourself back up, okay? So when you're reading a pattern, this seems to be one of the things that people have an issue with. So I, I think it's a really important time right now, if you don't understand anything on the pattern to ask Penny, um, because as you get further into Amigurumi, the pattern is everything. So even if you're gonna do the tiny soldier, that sort of thing, make sure that you can read the pattern that's in front of you Make sure you can read the abbreviations. And if you have any questions, this is a great time to ask. So is it that everybody understands everything or everybody understands nothing? <laughs> <laughs> I understand so far. Oh, okay. good. Well, that's, that's <laughs> really terrific. Okay, I, ladies. Well, I if we don't have any more specific questions, we are at the at the 10 o'clock hour. Um, and that way we can let Penny go on with her day and let me go on in with my day. Um, so I wanna say thank you to, for, to uh, Penny for having this class today. This is our very first time teaching a webinar. I think she did an amazing job.